Welcome back to the lecture series with uh, our new Vibe board. Been having a lot of fun with this thing. And um, it's all about education and, and with my, uh, my style of uh, social media. And I talk about the frequent last questions and ideas that you should understand when you're thinking about plastic surgery. So, um, topic of hand today is called breast augmentation incisions, pros and cons of the different incisions. And so women who are interested in breast augmentation, which is currently the number two most common procedural form in the United States, which has been like that for a very, very long time. Um, it's something I do personally quite a bit. I would say probably my top one or two procedures that I do personally for women interested in breast augmentation. Um, things of fantastic surgery, high satisfaction rate, long lasting results. I can give you a look, whatever you want me to give you. Something natural to something a little bit more like a push-up bra, you know, something a little more athletic, proportionate, to something very augmented. It just kind of depends on what you want. And my job as your surgeon is to find that implant that fits your desires and it fits your anatomy. Um, so super, super important. So going into incisions. So I would say these are the, some of the incisions that you might have heard about um, with breast augmentation. You know, this is an old one. It's called a tuba. It's a tuba incision. Maybe you guys haven't heard that. It's, it was something that I will think about like 19, 80s, uh, 90s, ran into a patient actually um, about, I think it was last year, she had a tuba. And I just wanted like, to videotape the whole thing because I've never seen one before at that, up until then. Um, but basically there's, there's, there's an incision just above the belly button and they tunnel a, make a tunnel underneath the, the abdomen along the midline here and they go into the left into the right breast. And um, through that tunnel, they inject, they pass a uh, catheter that has a implant in it, a saline implant, all wrinkled up, and then they fill up the, the implant with water through that tube through here. That, that is a long way to do that as far as covering a surface area. Had a lot of bleeding complications, um, and it, it's just, because you can't see anything. It's just really just, you know, dissection, and it just, it's a big bloody mess. Had a lot of issues with uh, caps contracture where had all that blood around the implant and it has nowhere to go and so your body sees that it's an inner tan and it starts, you know, it starts healing and then you kind of get these weird, you know, looking breasts. But I would say, I don't know anybody who does this anymore. And that was kind of an ancient historical kind of incision to avoid breast incisions. And so, you know, the incisions around the breast are going to be inferiorolar, which is an incision just under the areola. Uh, there's one underneath the breast. And there's uh, also this uh, exotic one, I call, it, I call it exotic, it's called axillary augmentation. So these are the ones you're going to see that your surgeon's probably going to, you know, discuss with you when you first uh, meet with the surgeon. You should ask them, like, what, what incision um, would you be using? I'll say 90% of uh, plastic surgeons, board certified plastic surgeons, are going to do an inframarimary approach, which is the incision that's going to be under the breast. And um, this incision here is is my preferred uh, incision because from here you can get into the anatomy of the breast fairly quickly and so it's here and so everything you can see everything you can see all the space around the, air, the, the breast tissue because we're underneath it we're in this plane here we're in this plane here so I can see everything so any issues associated to previous surgeries with uh, implants, you can see scar tissue, you can make adjustments to that. Um, anatomically, you can see where the muscle inserts, where the muscle is um, very, very important, when, especially with the, the submuscular plane, where the muscle here, and then we can be released here. We kind of release this here and then put the implant underneath the muscle. And so anatomically, you know exactly where you have the implant, you know the, the dimension of the space. Um, and you have visual, visual um, analysis of the, of the surgical field. The, um, the periolar incision, which is the next one, which is an incision that goes right here. Um, this is kind of more of a direct, um, I, some people can saw more of a direct, you know, incision into the, for breast augmentation. And so the incision lift here. But the problem with this, and this is, this is the problem, is that, you know, the surgically what happens is that the, the dissection plane goes in like this, here, and then goes like that. So this is the problem. This is the big, 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 big no-no here that causes problems. 
is that you're going through breast tissue and the breast tissue is an organ. It's a secretory organ, which means it has bacteria in it. It's producing milk, it produces you know, oils and stuff like that. This is technically a dirty organ. It's, it's, it's an external source of your body. We have bacteria. Women have bacteria in their gland tissue. Men have gland tissue. You have bacteria in these ducts. You have bacteria, okay? You don't get an infection because your body sees it's normal, but this bacteria should not be inside your body. There's the difference, okay? So when you make this uh, incision and you dive through the breast tissue, what happens, you, you destroy these, you're breaking these, these ducts and these glands, and all that bacteria in those glands and ducts are kind of spilling into the surgical field. Well, guess what? Now you have an implant that lives here, and it's been contaminated. It has all this surface, back, this gland bacteria on it, and your body recognizes that bacteria, but doesn't, it, doesn't, it knows it's not supposed to be there. So you get this inflammatory reaction. And so the body starts kind of building up this scar tissue and that's called the capsule. And it gets too thick. And then you get this, this issue called capsule contracture. So that's, that's the big problem with this incision is that you have an increased risk of capsule contracture. Capsule contracture, remember that word. Big problem, okay? And this, this technique specifically has one of the highest rates associated to capsule contracture. Again, because you're going through the anatomy of the breast tissue. Another problem with, with this technique is that if this, this tissue is not repaired correctly, um, when, you, when you dissect it and you don't repair that correctly, you can have like a soft tissue discrepancy. So you have like this weird dent um, right there. Another problem with that is, is that the, the nerves that come into the breast here, they also come here, you just cut them. And so issues with hypersensitivity, specifically numbness, significantly higher with a uh, subareolar incision. So this is the incision I don't like. This is, I, if you want it, not a big fan. The, I guess the pro to it is that your scars may be a little bit better um, because the incision is in the areolar skin. So the areolar skin has this more of elasticity to it and it, it tends to, it looks a little bit, it's a little bit easier to heal. Um, but to me, it's not worth it. This is the problem. This is the, the big, big problem with this incision. The last one is the inframammary incision. And so again, we go back to the anatomy here, is that the inframammary incision, if, you, if it's done correctly, it should be in the inframammary fold. And so we want the incision here, okay? This is where, again, you have the best access visibly to the, the surgical uh, space that we're gonna put the implant in. And I can see all the anatomy. Every revision surgery, and if you have implants and you have issues where the implant's off to the side too much, where the implant lives over here, um, or the implant has fallen below your fold and the implant's down here, or you're in, you have cap contracture and implants up here, like all this stuff is fixed with that incision. Go figure. Because again, this incision gives me access to all aspects of the breast space. I can see everything. I can manipulate the scar tissue around the implant. I can clean that scar tissue out. I can adjust that scar bag. You know, I can reshift uh, the fold. You're gonna buy this decision at some point in your life if you have augmentation. Promise. If you have this one, you know, sometimes you can do revision search with that. Preferably not, you're gonna use this incision. You have this incision up here. If you have that incision, you have problems with your breasts or you want to change them out, you can't change that implant out with this incision. You're going to get this one. So that's the preferred incision. It's the cleanest because it has the least contamination because the incision is right here and it, has, it goes directly under the breast tissue. Everything is in front, so your, your contamination um, contact to the breast gland tissue and damage to it goes down significantly. And then the last one is the axillary. The axillary incision, um, it's, I would say, is one of the more exotic techniques. Not a fan of it. Um, this incision is going to be up here in the axilla. Um, and we use an, it's called an endoscope. And so it has this camera on this uh, long piece of metal and it has a light to it. And the scope, you can kind of create the space associated to a breast implant where you want the space to be here. And so and if they, they do it and they put it on the muscle, they'll release the muscle here and the implant will live here. And it's all through the incision. And then we use this uh, funnel seed called the Keller funnel and then the implant goes in. Um, saline, saline implant is probably the easier to do that through the incision. You know, the bigger silicone implants require a bigger incision because it's just, it's a really long way to get down to put the implant here. And the problem with this incision is in your freaking armpit. 
Like, I, don't, I don't understand it. Like you know, armpit skin, it has glands, it stinks, it sweats, has a different class of bacteria for your skin on your armpit than it is on your chest or inside your glands and ducts. And so the contamination with this also is significant in my opinion. Um, the risk of infection also goes up, again, because it's kind of a dirty part of the body because um, of sweating basically and the, the gland tissue associated to it. So um, there are surgeons that specialize in that, in this surgery specifically with axillary, trans, it's called transaxillary breast augmentation. Um, and if that's what the incision you want, go find a surgeon that does that a lot. So that would be my recommendation. Again, there is an inherent risk of contamination that you have to understand and have that conversation with that surgeon if you decide to do that. That's it, hope you learned something. Um, again, I can talk about this for hours, but uh, I think we hit the high points. Again, thank you for following. Thank you for uh, watching my, my lecture series. Don't forget, drop a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to kind of get your feedback. Give me some more topic ideas. Love to kind of keep talking about education and plastic surgery and stay tuned for more.